to continue with our exercise one. We're in a new class period, so we saved all of our work and put it into our, our course folder, which you'll find in, in documents. We have it nicely organized into our exercise one folder. We have a reference folder, which gives us all of the different sources that we uh, had the option to play with. We need to use at least five of those for this assignment. But the only file we need to find is our working file format, which is called uh, a PSD format. So it's a Photoshop document. And I have it marked yellow because we haven't finalized it yet. We're still working on it. Instead of double clicking on this and opening it in Photoshop on this computer, I want to open photop.com, our freeware Photoshop analog, available from anywhere. I don't even need to log into it, right? I don't need to create an account as long as I save my work. And I can just drag that PSD file to where it says drop any files here. And it will load up and it will show me my most recent version and all of my layers as they were. So this is where we left off at the end of last class. And before I go to the next step, I just want to acknowledge what each layer is. So each layer is a combination of black and white pixels that I have arranged, transformed, in some cases warped, and then deleted with the lasso tool sections from. And so each layer is a combination of white, black, and in some instances, grayish pixels. And as I'm going through, for instance, this one, if I wanted to darken those gray pixels, we saw how I could go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And I could play with these sliders to make sure that the blacks are solid black and that the whites are solid white. And you'll still have a little bit of anti-aliasing. Those are like the, the softening of pixels at the edges. And you'll see sometimes one black looks different than another black. So this layer not, now looks nice and dark. I just used levels on it. This one, however, looks a little bit warmer gray. So I might take that layer, make sure I have it selected, and then do, let me make the screen bigger. Go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and push that slider for the shadows all the way to solid black. Okay. If ever I need to fit something on the screen, I can hit Command-0. If ever I want to zoom in, I hit Command-plus. If ever I want to move around the screen, whoops, I can hold down Spacebar while I'm zoomed in, and that will let me pan. I'm a little spoiled with my trackpad on my laptop because I can just use two fingers to do the same thing. But if I need to zoom it out, fit it on, Command-0. Next, I can zoom in, see what the, the black quality is of this. That was the one from Pixabay, so it's really nice and clean. But maybe I don't like that little jog there, so maybe I take my lasso. And I take that chunk out. Oh, but I need to make sure I'm on the right layer. And smooth that out a little bit. Or maybe not. These are the options we have. Okay, then my final fifth layer looks very different than the others because it's based on a pencil drawing. And I used image adjustments and really reduced it to, to black and white shapes, but because it was a pencil drawing, it still left a lot of gray pixels. So I'll show you how we can clean that up even more in this next step. Let's see if there's anything I want to erase from this layer. This is the last one I did. I want to erase this little guideline here. 
So use lasso and delete. Again, got to make sure I'm on the right layer. Yeah, and that's, that's why we practice this with exercises a lot. When you're doing raster imaging, everything's about layers because you want to have a lot of layer resources. So how do you navigate layers? One way is to just click on them directly to select them. The other is to use the move tool, which is at the very top of your tools. And what you'll see is under the move tool preferences or options, you'll have this option to auto select for layer. When that's on, then whatever you click, it will go to. Sometimes. <laughs> the problem is, because we're seeing a lot of these layers on multiply, what we think we're clicking on is not what we're actually seeing. So it's a little bit easier to have that turned off. So you're not accidentally clicking on layers you don't want to be clicking on. And instead, just do it directly from here. I made um, copies mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely make copies. I'm going to now show you this next step. Once I've finished cleaning up the individual layers, is I'm going to merge them all into one layer. But I'm going to do it in a way that's non-destructive. So I still have my individual layers as well. And that's kind of a, a nifty Photoshop trick I learned that I haven't found in any tutorial ever. And I haven't found it in any Photoshop book ever. And it's weird because it's incredibly useful. And it's just all you have to do is hold down Option when you then go to Layer Merge Visible. And instead of collapsing all of your layers, it will create a, a new version of it on top of everything else. So we'll be doing that next. But right now, I'm still just zooming in because while they're still separate layers, it helps to be able to isolate things. And when you don't know what layer you want to delete it from, you can go through all your layers <laughs> and try deleting. I have little schmutz here I want to get rid of. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Maybe I'll get rid of these eyeballs. Why getting rid of the eyeballs? Well, even though this is copyrighted material, we're trying to transform it into our own original vision. And so we don't want it to be too recognizable. So I might get rid of this here, the hand and head. But I like the, the general scruffiness of it. And I'll probably get rid of this. Just to meet your own aesthetics. Oh, i got to find the right layer for that, though. It's this one. Now, I don't think I want this, the big scheme of things, this little cloud. All right, now I think I'm there. I'm pretty close. Okay. So now this next step is an important one. So important that I might want to save it before I move forward. So I can just do File, Save. And what's nice about that is it will save changes with the same name and you want to see where it saves right it didn't save to downloads it saves to where you opened that file from right so here it is under exercise one so each time I hit Command S, it's going to update that same file, which is very handy, instead of making lots of duplicates in the downloads folder. That's the power of naming your work. OK, now this next step, I'm on my very top layer. I'm going to turn on my white background. And I'm going to select that very top visible layer. And I'm going to hold down my Option key, which is to the left of your spacebar. And I'm going to go up to where it says Layer. For some reason, I am in a tool selection I don't want to be in. Go to the Move tool. So select there. Hold down Option. 
go to layer, and then you'll see merge down as an option. Click on that while you're holding down option. So what it did, yeah, it didn't look like it did anything, but what it did is make a brand new layer on top of all of your existing layers that combine them all. So now I'm going to select all my other layers just by holding down shift and then selecting all of them. And now at the very bottom of my layer window options, you know, where you have like that new layer post-it, you'll see a folder icon next to it. If you click on that folder icon, this groups those layers into a folder. Why is that useful? It makes it really easy to turn them off and on. All those layers are still there. We just want to turn them off. So they're in this drop down. And then I also like to give this a color, which I think you can do in Photo P. There it is. If you right click on it, you can go to the very bottom and I usually give it a red color. So red is my way of saying this is useful to have in the file, but I don't want it turned on. <laughs> it's where some, some resources are, some assets. But now I have this file, which is everything combined. Oh, it's not everything combined. Interesting. So good thing I didn't erase everything, right? So let me open this up. This is everything combined. Go to your top file, make sure everything's turned on. Hold down option, then go to layer and merge down. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So to make this a little bit easier, everything else is normal mode. I didn't think everything was normal mode and it shouldn't matter but I'm going to convert this to normal mode because it's kind of treating it like that. And I'm going to get rid of all the whites before I merge mine because my merge should look exactly like this. And it doesn't. You know, it's treating that top one as not normal. I have another thought for why that might be. It might just be because it's the top layer. But let me try it one more time. Option, layer, merge layers. And now it did it correctly. So there's two, there's kind of merge down. Merge down is going to treat your top layer as a normal layer. And then it will merge everything underneath it up into that. So what you want is merge visible. In Photoshop, both are always visible under the layer options. In Photo P, merge layers is only visible if you have another entity above the layer that you're merging. In this case, the folder entity. That's a little confusing. Shouldn't be that confusing. But this is what we want. So we want it so it merges and everything is as it was with multiply. So we're seeing all the layers come through not one layer at the top that's made opaque. So I'm going to delete that one. I can just drag it down to the trash or I can just hit delete. Okay, so I have this combined layer that combines everything that's now in my folder. I've turned my folder off. Nice thing about this is now I can hit control T and get a transform box that will affect all of them at once, right? I can even warp them. But why is my transform box so much bigger than my canvas? And that's because with all of these layers merged, there is stuff out here beyond the canvas. So if I want my warp to not be so large, what I can do is use the crop tool at this point, And this will do kind of big, uh, blades at the edges of the canvas and cut off all the pixels and erase them that are outside of that. So now that I've cropped that, if I do command T, not command T, control T, I'm going to make that mistake a lot, control T because we're in a browser. 
much. It should give me a...